Oh, hey gang, welcome back to RC Diesel Channel. Always appreciate a familiar face stopping by. And I see a few I don't recognize too. Welcome. Today I'm starting a new video series on a T8 330 New Holland tractor with the 8.7 liter Iveco. This is going to be a fairly lengthy and technical series. So if you're into diesel engines or you're looking for some specific information relating to the 8.7 Iveco, this is going to be really fun. In today's introduction video, we're going to get Big Blue running, get him in the shop, diagnose our coolant and oil leak. It's a problem with certain serial number ranges of the 8.7 Ivecos. Uh, and we're going to pull the engine out and start getting ready to overhaul it. And you get to follow me through every step of the way on this one from start to finish. Ready? Okay, I'll grab my jacket. Let's get started. Okay, we got old Blue here that's got to go in the shop next. Uh, these tractors had an issue with the engine where they used bad O-rings on the packings for the liners, so they would drop coolant into the oil pan. There was a, a warranty for that, but I guess this guy's run just over the hours or it's just a little bit too old or whatever it is, so they won't warranty it for him. So um, we are getting that job now. We're going to tear it down, pull the liners out, put new packings on and see if we can fix this up. But this tractor's been sitting here for a while waiting for me, and that's a problem. Because when I pull out the dipstick, the full mark is there, and we have oil all the way up to there. So we got about, oh, three, four inches of coolant in the pan, it looks like. So I do not want to run it like that. I don't want to be putting that coolant through the bearings. The water sits at the bottom of the pan, so when you start it up, it just gets a big gulp of coolant and you just get straight coolant runs through all your bearings and everything. We don't need that. So the first thing we want to do before we even run it is get the coolant out of the pan. So that's what we've got going on here. Looks like we're draining a rad, but that's the oil pan that we're draining. Lots of coolant in the bottom. So the coolant all sits in the bottom of the oil pan. And so when you open the drain plug, or in this case the tap, it's the coolant that comes out first just doing it nice and slow so we don't suck a bunch of oil through there we don't we want to leave as much oil in there as we can now the batteries are completely dead on this machine so this will be my first time using my new noco gbx 155 booster so there the batteries are stone stone dead so let's see if it'll even do anything well if i could have a complaint about these noco boosters that's it right there. Those cables are always way too short to do anything with them. So you always, like, this is not, I don't want, that's an expensive piece. I don't want it just hanging there by the cables, but either that or I got to get a table and hold it. Anyway, so I have the override on right now, uh, forcing power in because the batteries are completely dead. So I'm just going to let it sit here for a bit, and then we'll see if it'll start. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes here. Uh, yeah, it shows it's still giving power. Uh, let's see, I found out the block heater doesn't work. So it's minus 10 this morning. This guy's gonna have to start on his own. Uh, open up door, there we go. Okay, let's see what we got here. It's coming alive. <laughs> Come on, come on, come on. Yes, 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 go, go, go. Oh, my booster pack fell off. See, that is the problem with these things. Well, that was a fail, but pretty good, I guess. It's showing a got a little bit too hot and it's dead now after putting all of this charge in here, but the uh Batteries are still, they don't even take a charge. So it did all that cranking just off that booster box. So that is pretty amazing for that tiny little thing to crank that engine over. But uh, we're gonna need a little more, looks like. Yeah, as soon as that booster pack came off of there, the cable came off and it wasn't running fast enough to charge yet. And these batteries are just stone dead, probably shot. So I had to get the diesel powered booster out again. You can boost anything with a Dodge. So I'll give that a shot. Well, we've had the old diesel power booster back on here for a little while. So jump back in and see if we can get it to go now. All right. There 
know if this let the glow plug or grid heater go. I don't know if this thing has glow plugs or grid heater or what. Let that thing cycle. All right, let's give her a shot. Oh, there we go. She's a runner. It does not like that cold. These newer engines, they don't start anything like the old ones. Some of these emissions engines are terrible starting motors. Well, there you go, Mr. Trudeau. That just goes to show you. These battery packs, booster packs are awesome. They have their place. But the technology just isn't there yet to replace our diesel powered stuff with electric powered stuff by 2035. So we're working on Old Blue here today, uh, finally. Um, the story is coolant in the oil, and these engines had a known problem with uh, the liner O-rings leaking, and that would allow coolant to drop into the oil. Um, so started tearing this thing apart, getting ready to get into it, and found that there is also oil in the coolant. That, that's coolant, believe it or not. And, uh, okay, so if we have oil in the coolant, that's usually not liners, that's usually not even a head gasket, that's usually the oil cooler. So, went to work and had Lucky pull the oil cooler out, and it's just nasty, nasty in there. The, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of corrosion built up around where the seals are supposed to sit, so that's definitely suspect. Uh, it doesn't look real good. So I took a look at this oil um, uh, oil cooler, we pulled it off, and all this little plasticky bits and stuff here, that was all inside, on the oil side. And we're like, well, what is this stuff? And I'm, I kind of was tracing through. I was following the ports from the oil cooler when it was off uh, through the block, and that oil comes from the filter straight to the cooler. So any bits of junk that wind up inside that cooler has to come directly from the oil filter. Well, this is the engine oil filter. This thing is completely ratched. And inside, it's all like imploded inside there. That's not supposed to look like that. So it's very interesting to me that this thing would collapse this way because typically... Uh, these oil filters have a relief in, built in them. Uh, like, I'm not terribly familiar with the Iveco engines, and I don't know exactly how this... This one doesn't seem to have any protection at all. It, it obviously relies all on the housing. There must be a pressure regulating valve in the housing, but obviously it didn't work because that filter, like, major, major oil pressure collapse here. So anyway, I uh, put a new, brand new cooler in it, and uh, tighten everything up with new O-rings, new cooler, all that good stuff. The reason why I put a new cooler was because A, I think it's leaking, and B, there's no way that I can clean that stuff out of those cores. It, there just isn't enough room. So we put a new cooler on, and uh, I checked with the dealer, and they said, yeah, every one of their stores sells them, uh, has sold them, so it is a problem area. So anyway, I went ahead and replaced it with new seals and everything, and then I pour, put, filled it full of water and pressure tested the cooling system. And it took about five or six minutes, but yeah, then it just started running water out of the oil drain again. So unfortunately, that did not fix the problem, even though it may be part of the problem. Um, it is not the reason why we're getting uh, water into the engine oil. So that's where we're going to need to actually pull this motor out and find out what actually is happening inside.
So this is coming along fairly well. Uh, in some ways I'm a little disappointed with the design of this tractor and in some ways I kind of like it. It's not bad getting all this stuff off of here, but uh, man, if you got to set valves, look at how much stuff has to come off to get sort of decent access to that valve cover. Like this would be, it'd be a $1,500 job to set valves in this thing. That's crazy. But anyway, I have noticed that uh, this engine's been out of here before, or at least good portions of it have been taken apart before. Found lots of clamps that were had been repositioned and lots of clamps like this one that weren't even used anymore. Nothing was even in there. Um, also found that the turbo is totally shot. It has a ton of in and out play. play. You can probably hear it. Side to side play doesn't worry me too much, but the in and out it has lots of in and out play. So the turbo is toast. Oh well, yeah, here's a nut that's missing on the fan. So that tells me that somebody's had the fan off before. Okay, I think I got most of this ready to go here. We're up to that point where I got to do motor mounts and the disconnect in the back. Um, this one doesn't look too bad. I think we have to undo these bolts, maybe lift that plate out, and it kind of looks like that engine is just sitting on a rubber mount back there. So that part seems okay. This front one looks easy too. Right down in there. That shouldn't be a big deal. Um, I am not a New Holland expert by any stretch, but if I understand this correctly, that disconnect back there, I gotta pull this shielding off, then it's gonna be a drive shaft there, kinda like the like the John Deere's do. Uh, so that doesn't look too bad. Um, I did check and the bolts don't go all the way down underneath the straw, so that's a good thing. But this motor mount here, this one worries me a bit. I'm not exactly sure how that one's gonna work. It kinda looks like I might have to do something with this tank yet, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, there it is, drive shaft, right there. Well, that was way harder than I thought it was gonna be. Those U-joints there, they were like really tight on that flywheel housing. They were really seized in there. Uh, so the front motor mounts here, you can see these bolt holes. Uh, there should be a plate, whoops, there should be a plate right here, but it is MIA, so to me that would be a little bit more indication that this motor's been out before. So the madness here was I wanted to pan off so that I can fill this thing full of coolant and pressurize it and look underneath there where the water is actually coming from just so I know what to look for when I start tearing it apart. As bad as it was leaking though, probably wouldn't need to do that, but it's always nice to know for sure. Uh, so we popped the rocker cover off to get a look inside here. And uh, uh, I was just wanted to see if all of a sudden water was coming up through a crack in the head or something or whatever and uh, just kind of slowly checking things out, working our way along, checking the injectors, looking for where water could have possibly, what is that right there? That is a cam bearing. And it came, uh, if I can get the right angle here. No, I can't really get you in there to see it, but it, it came from right in down in there. Let me see if I can get some light more focused into that area. Yeah, you can see that cam lobe there. Uh, with the phone, I can't get I can't get the right angle to be able to see, but that is where that bearing came out of rear, right there. You can see the funny wear pattern on that lobe, just a little bit of the lobe showing. So we're already gonna be a lot more expensive job than what we were hoping for. But that's the way these go. Found another problem, and that was this plate on the back. It's all loose and almost ready to strip out of there. It's kind of what it feels like. So 
we're gonna need that dampener plate too yeah this is how it goes you take it apart for one thing and you find 42 more that is real life it's kind of neat how they put the common rail right inside it's a little different all your high pressure lines and everything are all inside that's going to be it for this episode on the T8 330. I've echo guys, subscribe and set your notification bell to all notifications so you get alerted right away when part two comes out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.